Finally, the BMW i4 configurator is live. About time. Anyway, toss a family sized chicken pot pie in the oven and pour yourself a healthy serving of eggnog and get comfy. Because we're about to break down the i4 option by option to make sure we've built the perfect spec for both versions. Welcome back to Gearbox Pizza Gang. We are thrilled to have you. Little favor, if you dig what we're up to and want to continue to get average advice and insight into the crazy new world of cars, please consider hitting that sub button and thank you in advance. So before we start, for those of you outside the know, the BMW i4 is an electric sweetheart of an EV with decent range and solid performance. It comes in two trims. You got the E-Drive 40 and then you got the M50. The E-Drive 40 is the less powerful single motor version, but it still makes a healthy 335 horsepower, which is enough to send this guy to 60 miles an hour in a cool 5.5 seconds. Range-wise, we're looking at a uh, plentiful 300 miles. So then there's the M50. Yep, the quick one with dual motors, all wheel drive, and get this, 536 horsepower. And this bucket of electrons is going to hit 60 miles an hour in 3.7 seconds according to BMW. But please keep this in mind, BMW is notorious for drastically oh, underrating man. their horsepower numbers and acceleration times. So I would be surprised if the real world acceleration numbers aren't closer to like the 3.3 second range. Sounds good, right? Well, well, there's a slight catch. Because of this extra power and weight, the range here drops to 245 miles. Now. 245 miles is most likely enough for most people most of the time, but I don't know, for some reason there's still this sort of psychological hurdle at 300 miles. And I'm not exactly sure why, but 300 is proving to kind of be that magic number when it comes to range. Anyway, enough about that, let's roll up those sleeves and start building. So we'll be building both models here, but I think we're gonna start with the fast one. And right off the bat, you'll notice that this thing ain't exactly cheap, I mean, starting at a whisker under 66 grand. All right, so first decision, how about that shadow line trim for 400 bucks? Well, I think it kind of depends on the paint you're gonna be going with. Uh, you know, we're gonna take it for now, but we're gonna take another look at this when we're all wrapped up. All right, next up, let's pick some paint. So it's gonna cost you a bit. That is, unless you go with that Alpine white, which we won't be doing. There's a number of standard metallic paint options that's gonna run you about 550 bucks. And then there's the quote unquote individual color options that, well, it's gonna hit the wallet pretty hard. There's a few options at 1500 bucks and this frozen port em out blue, well, that's I mean, it's pretty awesome. But at 3600 bucks, I, mean, I think we're passing. I mean, there's just way better places to spend your hard earned cash and hey, I mean, you can always go for a wrap later if that's your thing. For now, I think we're gonna keep things a bit simple here. We're gonna go with this Brooklyn gray metallic. Yeah, that looks nice. All right, moving on. We got some wheels to look at and what's cool here is you can just kind of pick whatever you want. Everything's the same cost, so it's all about preference. I mean, you can actually even drop down to the 18s if you want, but I'm not sure why you get the fast one and then go for the smaller wheels, but if you want them, you can have them. You've also got your choice of rubber, performance, or all season. Look, it's your call, but if you live up north, get the all season tires. Otherwise, you'll probably regret it. I know I've made that mistake. Anyhow, we're gonna go with the 19 inch midnight gray wheels with performance rubber for no other reason than they just look really cool. Okay, let's take a look at the inside. And actually, there is a surprising number of options here, which is pretty nice. There's for synthetic and no cost options, or you can pony up for the real stuff and drop an extra 1,450 bucks. But keep in mind, if you go for the real stuff, then you're also gonna have to get that premium package. Now, since we're building the expensive fast version, we're gonna be a little liberal with the options. I mean, I mean if you need to come in at a cheaper price point, you're probably looking at the E-Drive 40 anyway. So we're gonna go for it. In fact, I mean, what can I say? I just kind of dig red interior, so that's what we're going with. But, I mean, this black and blue contrast stitching is also a pretty solid choice if you ask me. All right, next up, we got some trim options to look at. And, like, it's just not a whole lot to say about this. Just kind of pick the one you want. They're all a no-cost option, except for this carbon fiber that's an extra 300 bucks. Now, keep in mind, the carbon fiber trim is only available with the Big Boy M50, so you won't be able to get it with the E-Drive 40. And having said all that, I think we're just gonna take the aluminum. I mean, the wood's cool too, but if you're into this crazy fingerprint magnet sort of thing, eh. Moving on, 
So we got some packages and options to take a look at. We already picked up the premium package by getting that nice leather, but it does come with some other good stuff. You get the heated seats and heated steering wheel, along with that ambient light and the often discussed and underappreciated lumbar support. Now, I mean, you would kind of think that heated seats would be standard at this price, but whatever. Then there's this driving assistance professional package, and it's like it's not exactly cheap at 1700 bucks, and it's basically you know, it just comes with some automated driving and safety stuff. And per like personally, I usually end up just turning all this crap off, so we're gonna skip it. But if you're into this stuff, then go for it. Next, we have the parking assistance package, and look again, I don't know. I mean, look, this isn't some sort of Ford F650 extended cab with a super aggressive lift kit and ridiculous wheels and tires. I mean, it's not that sort of thing. You really shouldn't be having that much difficulty parking one of these, so I think we're gonna skip it. Okay, the last package is this high performance tire package, and honestly, I'm a little torn here. I mean, it's, it's pretty pricey at 2,500 bucks, but for that, you get those big 20 inch factory wheels that look pretty great. And then you also get this M technology package. Now, BMW doesn't really go into specifics with this, but it generally appears to be a set of upgraded cooling systems, which are probably not really needed. And look, yeah, it really just comes down to those factory wheels for me. And I like, I just, I dig those bigger wheels. So, ah, eh, what the hell, we're gonna go for it. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at the a la carte options and Right off the bat, there's a few in here I'd consider like almost mandatory. First, the heads up display. And if you've gotten used to having this, it would be a total drag not to have it anymore. I mean, I wish it was a little cheaper though, but even at a thousand bucks, I think we're picking it up. The next must have is gonna be the Harman Kardon sound system at 875 bucks. And look, I don't know, you like music? Yeah, well then this is money well spent. All right. Oh, while we're down here, we can pick up these red brake calipers for free. And look, this shouldn't be automatic, but because we're going with the gray on the outside and that sweet red leather on the inside, I think it's gonna look just right. Now, in an effort to try to keep this sticker price like somewhat reasonable, I think we're gonna call this build done. But look, there's a few other options that are worth mentioning. The drive recorder is cool, and at 100 bucks, it should be a no brainer, right? Well, uh, not so fast. You need to have that parking assistant package in order to get this option, which is another 700 bucks. So look at it this way. If you're already getting the parking package, then yeah, pick this thing up all day long for hundred bucks. Otherwise, I think there's probably better places to spend your money. And then there's the laser light headlights. And look, these are pretty powerful and all that, but it's also an extra grand, I don't know, for just sort of on the fence here and could kind of go either way, but we're already spending a hefty chunk on this thing. So we're just gonna leave it alone for now. So that puts us just under 74 grand for what I would call, I don't know, like a very well-equipped i4 M50. And it's not cheap. And we're gonna get more into the price in just a little bit. But next, we're gonna build the slightly less expensive, longer range one of these for those of you who just kind of need that extra mileage or you just wanna keep that price in check. So here we are, the i4 eDrive 40. As you can see, this starts just over 55 grand. So while we were just kind of throwing money around on the M50, like the Kardashian of your choice at a Louis Vuitton store, we're gonna be a little bit more frugal with this fella. So first option and first question, do you want the M Sports package? And look, even being frugal, the answer is a very, very solid yes here. Personally, I think it just makes a pretty big difference in how the car looks on the outside. And look, let's be honest, style is important, it just is. It's significantly more aggressive and you get that chubby, nice fat M steering wheel and bigger wheels that you're gonna get anyway. So yeah, I think it's a good value, we're going for it. Okay, picking some paint here and the options are pretty similar to the M50 with the exception that you get an additional no cost option with this jet black. There's also this skyscraper gray metallic that's new, but Look, it is not available if you get the M Sports package. So, sorry Skyscraper Gray, you're dead to me, bro. So, last thing, you don't get the mega expensive frozen blue paint option, but like that's totally fine. And I don't know, to keep things consistent, I think we're just gonna stick with that same sweet Brooklyn Gray. All right, looking at wheels here and assuming we're sticking with the M Sports pack, we only have two options here, both 19s. And personally, I kind of just like the midnight gray wheels here, but they're both fine, so just pick what you want. All right, onto the inside. 
Now I always splurge a little bit on the M50 by picking up that fancy real leather. Here, I think we're just gonna stick with this, the uh, synthetic stuff, which is still very nice. And to match the M50 build, I think we'll also go for red. Okay, looking at the trim, notice there's no option for that carbon fiber as that's exclusive to the big boy. So yeah, you know, look, seeing as these are all a no cost option, just pick what you like. I think we're just gonna stick with the aluminum though. All right, moving on to packages and options and I think we're gonna keep this pretty quick and simple. The only package we're getting is a premium package. Like I'm, I'm telling you, you might think I'm crazy, but the ambient light, it's kind of critical. Otherwise, it's like the inside of a black hole in there at night. And look, it's just one of those weird things that you never really notice until it's not there. And trust me, you want this. Oh, oh, and the heated seats and heating steering wheel are, I don't know, they should be kind of like must-haves at this price point anyway. For comparison's sakes, we're gonna call this thing finished. Now, personally, I'd pick up the heads-up display and the upgraded sound system, but look, we're sitting at like 60K almost exactly. And I kind of want to keep this price in check. So with this fella sitting at 60K and our well-equipped M50 sitting at 74K, hopefully that's a pretty clear sort of comparison. So you can see what you get for that extra 14 grand. Look, if you can swing it, I do kind of think you get a lot more for your money in that extra 14 grand. But I mean, we are still talking about a lot of money here. I mean, like 60 grand is a lot of money to spend on a car for just about anyone anyway. There is some good news though on this front. With the new infrastructure bill passing, there's gonna be more incentives that are gonna bring the price down on both of these significantly. Now look, for exact post-tax saving numbers of not just these, but all EVs, be on the lookout for all this info in a future video. But for now, you'll at the very least be able to shave 7,500 bucks off the sticker of both of these. And it's likely that you'll be able to save even more. But like I said, more on that in a future video.